Walk and the Charleston, the jitterbug was developed in Harlem, but it soon spread all over the world. This week, to celebrate Black History Month, we look at the origins of this exciting dance and its revival. <laughs> If there's such a thing as a classic American dance, the jitterbug probably deserves the title. People of all ages dance it in every part of the country, and everyone gives it their own individual twist. In jitterbug, the more ways you can move to the beat, the better. Jitterbug has retained its popularity over the years, and it's still being danced by some of the men and women who helped make it famous. People like Norma Miller and Frank Manning. You can dance the Lindy when you're 70. You can't do a lot of other dances when you're 70. It's impossible. You can always swing, because swing is perfect. Dancing gives the world pleasure. And who was it created by? You still have a few of those left that were part of the creators. All of this went down 50 years ago. For something to sustain 50 years, it had to have a lot of substance. Frank and Norma are now in their 70s. Not quite as acrobatic as they used to be, but every bit as smooth. That's what I enjoy. I, 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 and I love to. I love to hold a woman in my arms. <laughs> At those particular moments, uh, me and my partner are in love with each other. I don't think you ever see a Lindy Hopper that's not smiling. When everything, when everybody was feeling low, it was a dance that was a happy dance that would get people together. The black teenagers who danced it in the late 1920s called it the Lindy Hop. It was yet another outpouring of that era of creative ferment known as the Harlem Renaissance. In Harlem at the Savoy Ballroom, that was our niche. That belonged to us. And everybody came there. People used to stand outside the Savoy Ballroom just to watch the people go in. And they came there with the best they had. You would walk in, and this is this long ballroom, and from one end of the ballroom to the other were people dancing. There is rhythm and the Lindy Hop at Harlem's Land of Swing, homeland of happy feet. I think I was in my 20s before I realized the rest of the world didn't dance. I just never knew anybody who wasn't a dance. Loose-jointed girls and boys made of India rubber. Every Saturday night on the floor of the Savoy Ballroom, Harlem's best dancers competed against each other for a $10 top prize. So everyone was always on the lookout for a new wrinkle, a different step. There's somebody standing on the side watching you intently, you know, say, yeah, I see that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get that. You know, one of those things like that. If it's good, great. Maybe you change it around a little bit. Maybe you do it backwards, you know. But and then that person see that step again. He say, hey, man, that's a great step. Where'd you get it from? He say, oh, I got it from you. Then Frank Manning had an idea that would revolutionize the dance, a step that would become a trademark of the Lindy Hop. He called it an aerial. The very first time I did it was in a contest. And in dancing, we come into the last step. And I said to my partner, I said, Frida, this is it. Shall we go for it? So she said, yeah, let's go for it. like the whole Savoy Ballroom who were experts in Lindy Hopping. They arose as one and said, oh, they just started to screaming and hollering and, and jumping and stomping and carrying on. 
been out there all world. Maybe we're onto something. What they were on to was a dance that would soon move beyond the confines of Harlem and begin to excite audiences and dancers in white America. The vehicle for Jitterbug's burst of popularity in the late 1930s was a group called Whitey's Lindy Hoppers, carefully assembled from Harlem's ballrooms by a street fighter turned dancer named Herbert White. Whitey. I went with Whitey when I was 14 years old. I had won a contest. And he saw me dance in a contest. He brought me to the Savoy. Uh, he saw Frankie dance in the ballroom one time, and he saw Frankie and get after Frankie. He knew what he wanted. What Whitey wanted was to showcase the Lindy Hop, not only in America, but in nightclubs around the world. For that, he needed dancers like Frank and Norma, and he got them. We just had a charm life. When you're young, and you, somebody saying you're going to Europe and you're going to Paris and, oh my, I mean, are you, do you, 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 you're 15 years old. So I said, this is the life for me. You mean to tell me I'm getting paid, I'm dancing, and I'm seeing the world. Life is perfect. This is Norma Miller doing a move called Handspring Down the Back. One of Frank Manning's trademarks was a step he called the snatch. Whitey saw more than just a ballroom dance because he knew our capabilities long before we did. Because our now we would have just fluffed it off like any other dance. You know, it was just a dance in the ballroom. Thirty famous bands fill the air with hot rhythm for six solid hours. Through these thirty, this was black rock, music. Like a glimpse of the and we were the dancers that went along with that music. See, we went into places. We played Radio City. We played the Rainbow Room. We played areas where our dance was so popular. They had to accept us, and that was how America got exposed to swing. Swing it, honey child. Susie Q's going to town and how. With white audiences falling under Jitterbug's spell, it wasn't long before the news reached Hollywood, a town with limited opportunities for black performers. Hollywood called Whitey here in New York at the Savoy and wanted us for, to, for the movie. That was when, that was when you know you've arrived, when Hollywood called you. We didn't go looking for that job. Oh, uh, man, don't stop now. We're jumping. That job eventually led to the most famous Lindy Hop dance sequence ever filmed. A scene of such exuberance and artistry that it transcended the demeaning black stereotypes of the time. The movie was called Hell's a Poppin'. Here, Norma dances with Billy Ricker. Menz performs his specialty, a Charleston move called Crazy Legs with Willa May Ricker. And for the finale, Frank Manning and Ann Johnson did an acrobatic hoedown that featured some of the group's most show-stopping air steps. years to look back and said I, I mean you'd have to be crazy to do what we did you see but we did it because we loved it we had been so in tune to each other remember we lived together slept together worked together we were as best as we could be I don't think we've ever been better that's what we did that was ours it was a very fabulous group it was the best group that ever was in Lindy Hop It was also the beginning of the end. The war came. Race riots erupted in Harlem. The music began to change, 
and so did the dances. For Whitey's Lindy Hoppers, the golden era of swing was over, at least for a while. Rock, set, kick, step, set, kick, and set, set, kick. Warren Hayes and Carlene Hines are members of a British dance troupe called the Jiving Lindy Hoppers. They've come to the States for a series of workshops and performances aimed at a new generation of jitterbuggers. The first thing you've got to do when we're learning the Lindy Hop, which is the grandfather of all the jiving, isn't it, yeah? Or we call it jive, you call it jitterbug, yeah? Not only is it up here twisting and spinning, but it's also down here, so you can combine the two, yeah? Much more fun, Strange right? as it seems, the jiving Lindy Hoppers first learned the dance from watching Frank and Norma's old movies. The impact of Hell's a Poppin' was, um, wow. I mean, I, could, I, I couldn't speak, I, you know, I, I, I just saw it and, uh, and absorbed it all. <laughs> I just thought it was amazing. I just thought it was wonderful. I looked at it and I thought, oh my goodness, I'll, I'll never be able to do that, ever. I thought it was quite amazing. I think, you mean to tell me you sit in front of a camera, in front of a TV, and you do all of that? And you learn how to dance on that? I said, man, that's, I mean, I thought it was stupendous. In 1985, the jiving Lindy Hoppers finally met Frank and Norma, still swinging out in New York nightclubs. And actually going over there and meeting them, just seeing them still dancing, and still dancing well, was a real sort of satisfying feeling like, well, well, this is it, this is where it's happening, and this is what I've got to work towards. What they had to work towards was finding the soul of the dance the part that lay beyond counting beats and fancy footwork. I remember once that uh, Norman Miller got so angry with us, because uh, I was saying, but what beat do you call Because, you know, we, we, we Brits, we're very, very technical, you know? <laughs> we, we like to count things out, you know, and get it right, you know? Because if you start counting and talking like that with me, I don't talk to you. Are you I talk only at the level where the music is. Well, you notice when Frankie swing out, it's got that marvelous long line like a... Everything is so symmetrical. And if a dancer could just get that, that swing, when you see a person that every part of his body moves to the music. Dancing swing is not just dancing. You've got to hear the music. I think the best thing now is that they're, they're being exposed to Frankie. That's going to do more than all the counting in the world. And Frankie does spend a lot of time with them. And uh, that's the best thing they can do. I tell them, I said, watch Frankie. You got the best teacher in the world. Today, the jiving Lindy Hopper spend much of their time on tour, recapturing some of the excitement that electrified the Savoy Ballroom 50 years ago. Once you're in there amongst a, a live band and live dancers, one feeds off the other, you know, the musicians feed off the dancers, the dancers feed off the musicians. You feed off the audience, you feed off the atmosphere, you feed off the music. It's, it's incredibly infectious, it? I mean, it just keeps you going, the beat. People go away and they're so, they're just so happy you've, you've brought back a memory for them, you know. An old person said, oh, that brings back lovely memories. is keep a swing alive. You can't have enough dancing in the world as far as I'm concerned. And I'm glad that somebody wanted to pick up the gauntlet and carry on the work. It's authentic jazz. It's a connection right across time, isn't it? Other people can't recreate what I've experienced with the old masters. That, I suppose that gives me a burning desire to teach them as well as I can, you know, um, in my own small way, really, to do that, to, uh, to repay. You can share something, you bring something new into someone else's life. Bring them a bit of joy, which is what everyone needs. <laughs> Since dance is a hand-me-down art form, it always needs someone to hand it down to. 
people like Mickey Davidson and Clyde Wilder. other when you know, the, the last the last funeral we went to was my dancing partner Billy and I had been together 30 years and uh, when when we went to we was at the casket looking at Billy and it was me Frankie and there was Billy laying in the casket and we knew this was there's only two of us left sort of makes you feel um, sort of strange because you want this the case of playing musical chairs Like you say, I say, hey, how do you feel lately, kid? <laughs> <laughs> 